Few graphics cards have interested me more than the Radeon HD 2900 XT, a story of ambition, failure, and a card that was ultimately ruined by terrible drivers in the long run. And I've wanted one of these cards for quite some time, but have never been able to find them cheap, especially now, where the cheapest one on eBay is $120. But I believe I may have found the solution to that. To kick things off, let's unbox it. This card was purchased brand new, sealed in box for just 20 bucks. It seems like it was being sold by a wholesale computer company that had a ton of these sitting around in their warehouse. So this is the ATI Fire GL V8600, and I know what you're saying, this is clickbait, that's an old Fire GL card. But hear me out, this card is almost completely identical to the HD 2900 XT and I'll show you how. First let's talk specs. The card is using the R600 GPU, the exact same GPU used in the HD 2900 XT by the way, is making use of the original Terascale architecture. With this we have 320 stream processors and it's clocked in at 688 MHz. As for its memory configuration, we've got 1GB of GDDR4 VRAM clocked at 868 MHz, which is making use of a massive 512-bit bus. This allowed it to have huge memory bandwidth compared to any other card back in the day. As for power consumption, it eats through 159 watts, which is oddly less than the 2900 XT. The HD 2900 XT itself originally released in May 2007 with a price of $400, however this Fire GL card was priced just short of $2000. That brings me to the next thing that makes this card virtually identical to the HD 2900 XT. You see, the 2900 XT was a much cheaper card back in the day, in fact almost 4 times cheaper. So a popular thing to do was to soft mod your 2900 XT to have the benefits of the Fire GL counterpart. And this wasn't the thing with just that card either. It could also be done with ones like the HD 2600 cards as well as the HD 3870 and even the HD 4870. So essentially you could get a much cheaper Fire GL card. It's kind of ironic because the reason I got this card was to do the opposite. At least in my area, HD 2900 XTs are very expensive. So I got this Fire GL card instead for a whole lot cheaper. Even though we'll be using the workstation drivers for this card, I don't think it'll hurt gaming performance too much. Now back to the 2900 XT. With the specs I mentioned earlier, it actually sounds pretty good for 2007, right? Well, it's not that simple. Let's get into the card's troubled history. The story begins in November of 2006. Nvidia's G80, otherwise known as the 8800 GTX and GTS, just hit the market with some amazing reviews, and rightfully so, the card was a technological marvel for the time. It was insanely powerful, and was the first consumer graphics card to feature a unified architecture, which does, of course, mean it is DirectX 10 compliant. I could go on about this card's extensive feature set, but it's not the point of the video. The 8800 series was fast, really fast, and had tons of features at the time too. ATI fans wanted a contender to Nvidia's new high-end cards, but little did they know they were going to have to wait a long time for anything remotely competitive to arrive. It's now May of 2007 a whole six months after the release of Nvidia's 8800 cards. R600 had been delayed a whole lot, which is never a good sign. Nevertheless, ATI's contender was ready, in the form of the very card you see before you. Well, sort of, it did come with a red clear plastic cooler with some flame designs, but as I said, this card is pretty much identical. So how did it do? Well, it did okay, at least in the beginning. It was able to beat out Nvidia's 8800 GTS 640 on terms of performance, but the 8800 GTS 320 beat both cards in price to performance, so people opted for that card instead. And a few months later, Nvidia released their 8800 GT, which beat the 8800 GTS and kept pace with even the GTX, all with the card costing just $250 to $300, which pretty much ended this card's competitiveness altogether. Let's talk a little more about this specific card. The Fire GL V8600 cost a whopping $1900 back in the day, and this one is just brand new at 20 bucks. Externally, it is very different from the 2900 XT, sporting a larger cooler and PCB, as well as a darker color scheme as opposed to the aforementioned card. Oh, and when I mean larger, I mean much larger. This card is without a doubt the biggest one I own, bigger than even my now deceased GTX 780, which is odd considering that card consumes way more power. I'd like to think this card will stay cool, but from what I've seen that probably won't be the case. So now that it's in my system, we need to get drivers for it, which was pretty easy. AMD still has the drivers on their website, and they're really easy to find too. When the drivers finished installing, I noticed the display looked a little fuzzy, along with there being large black borders around the display as well. 
When I googled the issue, I found out older cards sometimes don't like DVI to HDMI adapters, so I exchanged the one I was using with the DVI to VGA adapter included in the box, which solved the display issues. Oh, and when people said these cards were loud, I thought they were just exaggerating, but wow, the noise really caught me off guard. Take a listen. Yeah, reviewers back then cited the noise was tolerable if your PC was sitting under the desk or something, but really only just. Even despite changing the thermal paste, the card would idle up to 65 degrees. Yikes! Luckily under full load, the temperatures never exceeded 72 degrees, so it's not too bad at that. However, the card would sound like a jet engine while doing this. As for testing this card out, DirectX support tops out at 10, so we do have a limited library of games that we can run. Some newer ones may launch, and some may not. It really does depend on the game. I'll be putting this card in my main system, which consists of a Core i7-3770K clocked at 4.6GHz on all cores, and 16GB of 2133MHz DDR3. Let's put this thing through its pace and see how it does in this set of benchmarks. First off, we have Need for Speed Carbon, running at 900p with a mix of high and max settings. It got an average frame rate of 59fps, with 1% lows of 53fps. Overall, the game looked great and ran great as well. The experience was so good I found myself playing for a few hours. Next up, we have Crisis, running at 1080p with a mix of low and medium settings. With this, it got an average of 47fps, with 1% lows of 24fps. All in all, it was a good experience, especially with the high visual fidelity offered at 1080p. Next is Tomb Raider, running at 900p with low settings. It was able to get averages of 47fps with 1% lows of 34fps. The game didn't look too great, but it ran very well, especially considering how much newer the game is compared to this card. Finally, we have Passmark Performance Test 10.1, and with just the 3D test we scored 649, which is pretty much within a margin of error of the 2900 XT's average score of 660. Despite its flaws, R600 is one of my favorite GPUs of all time. It was a product of such an interesting time in ATI's history, and although it may not have been the best performing part back in its day, it's still a technical achievement for ATI and has such an intriguing story behind it. Anyhow, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.